The nature of exponential functions is fundamentally different from other types of functions that have been studied. And that fundamental difference is really clearly observed by the fact that the x value is in the exponent in the power of the function. So if I look at my general form of an exponential here, it says that y equals k times a to the power of x plus c. So as x changes, so does the power. Okay, With linear and quadratic functions and cubic functions and other polynomials of that type, the x variable is raised to the power of a known integer, a known constant. Here, the variable is in the power. And that changes everything and, and means that we have a, a, a whole new set of considerations to make for the properties and, and features of exponential functions. So I've just got a little example here of, of an exponential function. Um, it's y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x plus 1. All right? and I think it's important just to consider our point like x equals 4, for example, to see, to see how we calculate the y value. So if we consider x equals 4, then I need to have y equals 3 times 2 to the power of 4 plus 1. Well, 2 to the power of 4 means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and that's 16. 3 lots of 16 is 48, plus 1 gives me 49. Okay, so I think that's quite important so that we, we understand how these things are calculated. And it's perhaps not difficult to imagine then that as the value of x increases, 2, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, 2 to the power of 6 is 64, that the, the value of y is going to increase uh, really rapidly, which is where the phrase increasing exponentially comes from. So we need to have a, a look at, uh, at how that growth occurs. Okay, So we've looked at that example here. Here I've got a table of values that's been generated in Excel for this function. Um, and we can just see some key points. We can see the one that we've just done there. When x is equal to 4, y is equal to 49. It might be easy to consider when x is equal to 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2 times by 3, which is 6, plus 1 is equal to 7. So you get that. And as always, we're keen to know the y-intercepts of these functions, what happens when x equals 0? Well, here's where exponentials do stand out from other functions, because if I make the exponent there 0, then anything to the power of 0 equals 1. And so it doesn't disappear as it would with a quadratic or a linear. Uh, anything multiplied by 0 is going to be 0, but raised to the power of 0, it's 1. So 2 to, uh, two to the power of 0 is 1, multiplied by 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So when x equals 0, y equals 4, which is why I've got this, this point here. Okay, And you can see actually what happens as it becomes more negative. Okay, The, the rate of decrease, if you like, begins to slow down rapidly, or as rapidly as the rate of increase goes uh, in the other direction. Now, I think we need to see this in, uh, in another form to try and get a feel for what's going on. So I want to have a, a bigger look at this function, look at it uh, further, uh, further down the line. We can see this, in, this rapid increase going up. If I, if I start to, to sort of grab the graph and drag it forwards, I can see that that's increasing rapidly. I'm at, at 3 and 25 and it, it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Okay, and that happens now. I'll just go back to where we were before. But as we go the other side, as the x values are negative, that, that increase is considerably less. And it looks here like it flatlines, as it were, on x equals 1. And that's an important thing to look at there, because it looks for all the world like that is the line x equals 1. So we're going to need to use some zooming tools here, just to look a little bit closer here. I'm going to zoom in on this section here, okay, and try and demonstrate that, in fact, it looks like it's on x equals 1, but it isn't at all. Right? There's, there's a gap here. You can see the scale of my graph has, has uh, become much, much finer. I can drag it even further left, 
And again, the further left I drag it, the more it looks like uh, the x, it's the line x equals 1, but if I zoom in enough times, eventually I'm going to see that it isn't actually x equals uh, 1. Then we can see the rise beginning to appear. It gets very close, but it isn't. So I'm just zooming in on that point to show that it's very, very close to x equals 1 without being x equals 1 at all. You can see the scale. I've just put it there on the right hand side. I thought it would be useful to see um, a table of values here. We can get our calculators to generate this. I've done this in Excel uh, to try and see, try and help us see quickly what happens. I'm going to go up through the x values starting with 0 there, 1, 2, 3, 49. We, we did that one for x equals 4. Well let's just see what happens if we go all the way to 30 and get a feeling for how rapidly the value of my function increases to the point where I've got 3 billion there, 221 million, 225,473 for an x value of 30. So it increases rapidly, exponentially, as is technically correct. What happens if I go the other way? Well, we can see that decreasing, but it seems to be getting closer and closer and closer to this value of 1. You can see as I go up to minus 30, how close it gets to one without actually ever getting there. Okay, and this is a really, really important feature to understand about exponential functions. They all have this limiting value, which is known as an asymptote. The asymptote, here we are, here's the word, that's how it's spelt, is this limiting value of an exponential function. The value it approaches but never gets uh, never actually gets to, and these are these are horizontal lines of the form y equals. So uh, in this case, it would be y equals one. So there it is, y equals one, the equation of our asymptote. So we've got our key points here: the y-intercept at zero four and the asymptote at y equals uh, one. Now, just quickly. A little look at some other exponential functions to, to give you a range of the shape and size that they come in. Depending on the values of k and a and x and c, they can all look a little bit like this. But you can see from this diagram here that they do all have this limiting value that happens at different stages. So this green one is limiting there. These ones are limiting here. That one's limiting there. And we've got another one limiting there. Okay, so they cross the y axis in different places, and the, the position of their asymptote is different um, based on the values of k, a, and c.